To maximize your HNT earnings, you should get the highest TBI antenna available in the market, right? Well, the answer is actually no. In this video, we will have an in-depth discussion on what would be the best antenna for your helium miner. Hey folks, this is Roy and welcome back to my channel Eigentech. In order to maximize your HNT earnings, there are a few points to consider. The first one is hotspot placement which determines your reward scale. The next one is view from your antenna. The third one is appropriate antenna type in terms of what should what kind of gain you should use. And finally the cable which connects the hotspot and the antenna. In a previous video, I have explained the best helium hotspot placement strategy which will maximize your reward scale and help in improving the HNT earnings. I highly recommend you to watch that video. You will find the link in the description as well as at the top right corner. In this video, we will discuss the following three points. So first one is view from your antenna. If you live in a, a low rise building in a city, it might look something like this. For a rural area, it might be like this or if you live in a high rise building in a mega city, it might be like this. So your antenna choice depends on what kind of view you have uh, from your window or the location of your antenna. In this video, I am going to provide some basics of antenna theory. You can skip this part if you like, but I would still suggest you to go through this so that you have a better understanding of how an antenna works and you can make a better decision for your antenna. In order to understand how an antenna works, we can take the analogy of a light bulb. A light bulb draws electricity and radiates light. Similarly, an antenna also draws electricity and radiates radio waves. You can see the light because it falls under the visible spectrum, but you cannot, you cannot see radio waves because the frequency is very low is 915 MHz for US and 868 MHz for Europe and similar frequencies for other countries. However, there is one difference between a, between a light bulb and an antenna. The antenna can also receive radio waves and the light bulb cannot receive any light. So what is an antenna gain? We will again consider the light bulb. A light bulb basically radiates light in every direction uniformly. But now if you place a mirror on top of it what will happen some of the light will reflect back so as a result in the bottom part of the bulb you will have more light and the top part will have darker region so you can say that you have achieved gain in the bottom part because it has more light compared to the case when there was no mirror to understand the similar concept for antenna we will take this theoretical concept where uh, the antenna is a point like antenna represented by this red dot here and it uniformly radiates energy in every direction. So this would be called an isotropic antenna. Now if you take a slice of vertical cut of this sphere, it will look like a circle. So you can see the distance from the center to any point is equal. So this situation is called no gain because the power radiated in any direction is the same. Now if you can modify the radiation pattern in this way so that the power delivered in one direction is much larger compared to some other direction. This would be called an, uh, a high gain antenna. And the gain is simply the enhancement in the power radiated compared to the isotropic antenna case. So if you want to look at the mathematical expression it would be simply the ratio of peak power in the direction of maximum gain compared to the power are delivered by an isotropic antenna like this. So now you understand what a gain is but then what is a dBi gain? You keep listening that I need uh, there are 5 dBi antenna, 7 dBi antenna so what are those? So dBi is basically the same thing but it is uh, it is expressed using the logarithmic scale. So you can see this is called the linear gain and gain dBi is basically 10 times log to the base 10 uh, of the gain linear gain. So you don't need to understand all this expression. What it basically means that dBi represents the gain of an antenna in decibels with respect to an isotropic antenna represented by this uh, blue circle. Now, I told you that the blue circle doesn't have any gain or no gain. So that in dBi scale, that would be zero dBi. So zero means no gain, no loss. 
Now for any high gain antenna, you will have some positive DVI. So I have prepared a chart here. So zero DVI means no gain, so 100% of the power. Three DVI means twice the power delivered in the direction of gain. Six DVI means four times power. Nine DVI means eight times. Ten DVI means ten times power. So remember that this power enhancement is in the direction of maximum gain, which means there will be losses in other direction because antenna is a passive element. It cannot generate power. So whatever power it draws, it just simply radiates that in the air. So if it has a gain in some direction, it will have loss in other direction. For example, if you look at this arrow, it has loss compared to the isotropic case. So that can be represented by, by let's say minus three dBi, which means 50% of the power is radiated in this direction. So it has a loss. So now that we understand what dBi gain is, the next point is to understand the coverage of an antenna, which is determined by its beam width. So this is the direction of maximum gain. And we consider two other points at which the power delivered is half of the power delivered in the maximum gain direction. These points are called half power points or minus 3 dB points. The angle between these minus 3 dB points is considered the is called the beam width. So this is roughly the coverage of your antenna. So it doesn't mean that there is no radiation in other direction. There are, but the majority of the power will be delivered in this direction, which is called the beam width. So the typical antennas that you will use uh, is called uh, dipole antennas and the 3D radiation pattern looks like this. So the red part is where you have um, more gain and the green and indigo colors represent uh, less gain. These antennas are, are also called omnidirectional because if you can see the radiation is kind of uniform in the azimuthal plane or the horizontal plane. If you use a higher gain antenna, the radiation will change. It will now have main lobe, uh, side lobes and so on. So it becomes complicated. So in order to uh, represent this in a more simpler form, we use this beam width diagram. So for an antenna, if the, the coverage is simply determined by its beam width, which is uh, the angle in between the minus 3 dB points. Uh, so remember that the stock antenna that you will get in with most of the helium hotspots will have a 1 to 4 dBi of gain. This picture shows you the beam width for different type of antennas, starting from 2 dBi to 9 dBi. You can see for very low gain antennas, like for stock antennas, the beam width is very wide and it will give you almost 360 degree coverage. So it will have signals radiated in almost every direction. However, the signals will not travel very far. Uh, it will have a coverage of about 3 kilometers or so. With 5 dBi antenna, the beam width is medium and it will cover a distance of anywhere between let's say 1 to 5 km. Then with 7 dBi antenna, the beam width now becomes low and it can now travel longer distances because the signals are pushed out far, uh, somewhere between 2 to 10 km. And finally the 9 dBi antenna which has a very narrow beam width, it, it sends the signal almost uh, horizontally. Uh, and it can reach very far distances, much larger than 10 km up to even 50 km or so. However, the actual coverage, uh, this is just a rough guide, the actual coverage will depend uh, strongly on the topography. So topography means what kind of surroundings you have, whether there are large buildings, big trees, what kind of terrain you have around your house and those things. Next, we will consider a few cases and discuss what would be the best antenna for those scenarios. But please note that this is a rough cut. So the first case is urban area with high elevation. For example, the antenna is placed on the roof of a tall building. So if you use very high gain antenna in this case, the signals will be flushed out almost horizontally. So it will not be able to reach any other hotspots in the surrounding buildings. So this is uh, not recommended at all. If you use a medium gain antenna, what will happen? You will not be able to reach hotspots within your vicinity, but it will be able to reach out uh, other hotspots further away. So this might be appropriate if you live in a very big city, but for a smaller city, this might not be appropriate. In that case, uh, a low gain antenna might be more appropriate because you will be able to reach other hotspots in your vicinity. So. Um, the, so the witness diagram 
for a high elevation medium gain antenna might look something like this where you can see there are few hotspots in the vicinity but most of the weaknesses are coming from uh, far away hotspots so next one is urban area and medium elevation in this case you might use high gain antenna depending on uh, if you want to give uh, get weaknesses from further away hotspots but uh, I, I think the best will be the medium gain antennas because you will be able to give coverage to almost the whole city and uh, similarly a low gain antenna will also work for hotspots within your vicinity so in this case uh, for the medium elevation medium gain antenna your uh, Witness diagram might look something like this. I can see uh, it has this particular hotspot could witness uh, many hotspots within its vicinity as well as hotspots which are far away. Uh, finally, urban area and low elevation. So in this case, uh, both the high gain and medium gain antennas are not recommended at all because your signals will be completely blocked by other buildings in your surrounding. So you'll not be able to get many, many witnesses. Uh, in this case, you should use low gain antenna because the signal will uh, kind of form an umbrella. It will first go up and then uh, try to try to reach other hotspots. And the the witness diagram might look like, like something like this, uh, where you can see it has reached uh, some few hotspots within its vicinity, also a few which are a little far away. Now the point is, what should you do for rural areas? So. If you are far away from a big, big city, you should use a high gain antenna so that uh, if you can reach many hotspots in the city. Also, it will provide a large coverage in the area which is in between your house and the city. You can also use a medium gain antenna if your goal is to co give coverage to uh, closer parts like uh, a few kilometers around your uh, house, say up to 10 or 15 kilometers. But you should not use a low gain antenna because your signal will not reach out very far and you will not get as many witnesses. So in this case, both medium gain and high gain antenna might be appropriate. And the last option is if you, what, will, what should you do if you live on the side of a mountain. So in this case, uh, let's say there is a city uh, at the base of your mountain, then you can tilt your antenna so that you can reach many hotspots in the city. But however, in this case, uh, you should not use omnidirectional antenna because it radiates energy in every uh, direction perpendicular to the axis of your antenna and this signal which is going towards the direction of the mountain will be blocked and wasted. So that is why you should not use omnidirectional antenna. In this case, what you should use is something called a patch antenna. Okay, because uh, what it does, it uh, focuses the radiation in one direction and so that you do not have much wastage of your energy. So this is how the patch antenna looks like and this is the radiation pattern. You can see the radiation is uh, largely focused in one direction and not in other directions. But again, it depends on what you want. What is your target zone? If you want to give a coverage to your vicinity, you might use a low gain antenna as well. Okay, so the next uh, final point to consider is the choice of cable. If you are using the stock antenna which is uh, mounted directly on the miner, uh, there is no, of course, no cable and in this case, uh, in the US, a beacon signal radiates about 27 dBm of power. If you are using a, an outdoor unit where again the outdoor antenna is directly mounted on the unit, there is no cable. But if you have an indoor miner and you want to use an external antenna, you have to use a cable, there is no other option and any cable will have some loss. For example, if you have 6 dB loss in your cable and then originally you would have 27 dBm of power but after this loss you will only have 20 dBm of 21 dBm of power radiated by the antenna which means you have 4 times less power so your signals will not travel as far as it could. So you should always use a low, left, low loss cable like one exam, good example is LMR 400. It has about 3.9 dB loss per 100 feet or 12.8 dB plus uh, uh, per. It has about 3.9 dB loss per 100 feet or 12.8 dB per 100 meter. Most likely you will not need to use uh, any cable which is longer than 100 feet. And the last point, uh, so you should minimize the cable length. Uh, to minimize losses and also any connector like this kind of uh, 
uh, our PSMA connector or N type connectors will have some loss roughly let's say 0.5 dB per connector so you should also use less number of connectors so in other words uh, if you need a 100 feet long cable you should not use two 50 feet long cable because there will be two more connectors rather you should use one 100 feet long cable so let us now summarize what we have discussed so far if you are in an urban area and you are placing your antenna at a low elevation you should use the stock antenna which are in between 1 to 4 dBi. Uh, if you have if you are placing the antenna in a medium elevation you should definitely use medium gain antennas which will probably give you the best coverage and if you are placing at a high elevation then it depends on what you want if you are if you want to reach out the hotspots close by you should use a low gain antenna but if you want to reach out further away you should use a medium gain antenna um, then for the suburban areas uh, you should uh, put your antenna as high up as possible you can use a pole if you want and uh, most likely a medium gain antenna will work best in that scenario and finally in for rural area i uh, should place your antenna above your roof and again try to use a pole and uh, you should use medium to high gain antenna so 7 to 9 dbi again of antenna but please note that again this is a general guidance you have to make a decision for your antenna depending on your location and what is your target zone but please note that outdoor antenna will always perform better than the same dbi indoor antenna this is because uh, for indoor antennas some of the signal will be attenuated while passing through the glass window and some other signal will be wasted inside your room so if you place the antenna outside there is still a chance of some of those wasted signals which can go further out and communicate with other hotspots. Alright, let us now come to the final remarks or key takeaways of this video. After figuring out the best location of your hotspot, uh, next, next important factor is to find the appropriate antenna, which depends on the view from your antenna, elevation, topography and the target zone. But remember that a uh, higher dbi gain antenna is not always going to perform better as i have discussed in the video then try to use low loss cable which connects your antenna to the hotspot uh, reduce the length so use the minimum length of the cable that you need and reduce the number of connectors to minimize losses and finally remember that the location and hotspot density is far more important for your HNT antics. The location decides your uh, reward scale and the hotspot density around you will determine, determine how many witnesses you are going to get and how many other hotspots is going to witness your beacon signal which is uh, the main contributing, contributing factor for HNT antics. And the second important factor is the elevation of your antenna. So if you can place uh, your antenna 10 to 20 feet above the highest roof in your surrounding is going to perform very well. I hope this video will help you in deciding what would be the best antenna for your helium hotspot. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section. That's all for today. Thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized.